Well, a senior administration official uh, called it yet, an, uh, yet another unnece totally unnecessary and escalatory uh, step. Uh, referring uh, to uh, this uh, pattern uh, that uh, Vladimir Putin has shown over the uh, recent weeks. Uh, Jen Psaki, the White House press secretary, uh, said that uh, Putin had a pattern of manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify their aggression, referring, of course, to uh, Vladimir Putin's comments about uh, NATO's uh, aggressive uh, comments towards uh, Russia. So the White House is uh, sort of uh, dismissing uh, this idea of a nuclear uh, threat as uh, yet another uh, pattern of Putin and uh, yet another way for Putin uh, to sort of uh, raise the stakes uh, possibly ahead of uh, these talks uh, between the Russians and the Ukrainians. Uh, but the Americans are really uh, trying to not get into uh, this escalatory uh, rhetoric of a nuclear threat and sort of uh, trying to play this down as uh, just a posturing from uh, the Russian president to uh, try to minimize maybe uh, the threat of uh, that uh, nuclear posture by uh, the Russians. Uh, the Americans are really focused right now on uh, stepping up the sanctions. You've been talking about uh, those sanctions coordinated with the Europeans. Also stepping up uh, their uh, humanitarian aid as well as uh, their military aid to try to help the Ukrainians face the Russian as best as, as they can. Okay, Tavan, Washington has been very active on the diplomatic front throughout this crisis. Uh, but what's its current military role on the ground in Ukraine, if any? Well, on the ground, there is uh, no uh, military, really, uh, presence uh, by the Americans, because that's something that uh, the U.S. president has simply uh, put completely off the table. He's been repeating it over and over again. He will not be sending U.S. troops in Ukraine to fight Russia. That said, uh, there's a lot of military aid. Just recently, uh, they announced a uh, an extra $350 billion in military aid uh, to, uh, to the, the Ukrainians, uh, bringing it to a total of about $1 billion uh, in military aid sent by the United States. Uh, the question, of course, is how quickly uh, that aid will get to the Ukrainians. Uh, that said, the U.S. are extremely present on NATO's eastern flank. That is where uh, Joe Biden is focusing his attention uh, because he doesn't want to go into Ukraine, but he's been sending U.S. troops uh, to that NATO eastern flank. Now, before this crisis, there were already about 80,000 U.S. troops all over uh, Europe as part as uh, the, the NATO uh, presence, but also uh, on U.S. military bases, especially, of course, in Germany. And over the course of uh, this crisis, as things were escalating uh, between Ukraine and uh, Russia, the president uh, sent more troops just a few days ago, uh, announcing that an extra 7,000 troops uh, based in the United States were being sent over first to Germany and possibly to be redeployed uh, elsewhere, most likely uh, to that NATO eastern flanks. There were also redeployments within Europe, uh, moving, for example, uh, last week, uh, moving about uh, seven or 800 troops based in Italy uh, towards uh, the uh, three Baltic states, also movement of equipment, fighter jets, helicopters, all of that being really uh, shoring up that NATO eastern flank, specifically uh, the three Baltic states, as well as Poland and Romania, those countries, those NATO members uh, that are really on the front line uh, facing uh, the Russians. And so uh, the goal for the Americans is to show uh, their support to these uh, eastern members of NATO and to shore up the defense of uh, NATO on that eastern flank and uh, to show that they are ready if Vladimir Putin were to decide to go further than Ukraine.